the Waterfront Tavern. You may have heard of it. Known as the Killer Bar or Ruffus Bar in America, Bellingham's own Waterfront Seafood and Bar has a reputation for being a temporary lodging to three of some of America's most notorious serial killers, Ted Bundy, the Hillside Strangler, and DC sniper John Muhammad. Sitting down to enjoy a nice bowl of clam chowder, guzzling down a beer, or gathering around a board to throw some darts, the Waterfront Tavern has become a hub that is known to attract serial killers and other lesser-known criminals like James Allen Kinney, for reasons that are unexplainable. Whether it be John Muhammad slinging down a Budweiser while watching The Price is Right, or Hillside Strangler Kenneth Bianchi acting like the nicest and outgoing person ever, interactions and speculations have built up over time since the 70s. Opening at 10 a.m. and closing at 1 a.m. on the weekdays, this bar has amassed a certain likeness because of its known history that aids well to its eerie vibes. According to an Esquire article written about this, the dimly lit bar sits on barnacle-encrusted stilts above Bellingham Bay. It's got $2 beer, $4 clam chowder, a cluttered bay view, brandy-colored paneling, and a century of history. Regular John Riley has a theory. The bar is the lowest point in the hilly town that's as far as anyone can run in America without leaving the country. Restless troublemakers roll into town, then gravity brings them down to the waterfront. Even in a local Reddit thread, someone said, I'm a pretty hard skeptic, but I did feel weird. It's hard to say. We were all really biased, so it did feel pretty unsettling. I was honestly pretty excited to go, but once we stepped in, smiles and giggles kind of stopped and we all got pretty uncomfortable. I was with three other guys, so I still felt safe. We were spooked and intimidated, though, and not in a fun way. Although some of these stories are contested to be urban myths, the Waterfront Tavern still remains to be a spooky place since the 1970s, when a couple of these individuals were spotted and seen, all the way up to the early 2000s with the most recent serial killer appearance. Hearing all this lore, I thought it would actually be really cool to check out the place. Guess what? I'm currently in front of the Waterfront Seafood and Bar, or known as the Waterfront Tavern, and because I've been deep diving into this lore, I thought I'd actually go inside and see if it lives up to its reputation. So, let's go inside! My first initial reaction walking in was the atmosphere felt very calm and casual, as many of the regulars were there sitting down chatting it up with other people. You could tell it was very laid back, and I even got a chance to sit down with the owner to talk more about the bar's history. I am here with the owner of the Waterfront Tavern, Lynn. Uh, I guess do you want to introduce yourself a little bit? My name is Lynn Farmer, and I've owned the tavern for 24 and a half years. When you became the owner, did you know about all the Waterfront Tavern's history? Well, the lo the rumors were two of the serial killers had been in here before I purchased the tavern. Um, Ted Bundy, and I can't remember the other one, but I'm not sure if it's true or not. One bartender says yes, one bartender said no, so I don't know. Um, since I bought the bar, the DC Sniper, yes, did come in here, and William Kinney came in here. So those two did come in here since I bought the bar. Mm -hmm. And I know that you said that you talked to one of them, right? Yeah, the DC yeah. Sniper. He yeah. used to come in every morning um, after he would drop Lee Malvo off at a high school with his duffel bag, of course back then we didn't know what right, was in his duffel right. bag, and set it at the side of the bar and just sit there, mm -hmm. have one beer, watch the news, and then leave. Very quiet, never ever said anything to anybody, just watch the news, drink his beer and left. Mm -hmm. So when you heard about everything that happened on the news, what was your like gut reaction? Well, when we saw his picture on the news of who he was in Bellingham, my bartender and I, we just looked at the TV like, oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So That must be pretty shocking for that. Especially because you said he was a regular, right? So he Yeah. He, you know, like Monday to Friday, after he would drop the kid off at school, he would come in here for a period of a couple weeks. Mm -hmm. um, he actually dropped off a job application when I was applying for a cook at that time. Um, I think we needed some, I can't remember, but he dropped off the uh, application. Um, so then when we saw it on the news and whatnot, uh, we were just like, holy cow. So then the police came and they wanted to ask us questions about it. So when that happened, then that's when all the rumors of these people were in here and these people were in here and one bartender was saying yes and one another bartender was saying no. Wow. So, but then it got really crazy because then we had every kind of press you could think of camped outside the door and it got to be a hindrance and the customers were saying we're not going to come in anymore as long as this is going on because they were harassing the customers, you know? And they're like, we don't want our faces plastered all over the news and stuff. So, so then it kind of got 
blown out of proportion and I had one bartender that thought it would be cool I think to exaggerate it a bit um, he's the one that said yes they were all here and it's possible that they were because he worked here at that time he worked for like eight years before I bought the bar here so it's possible um, but he ended up on like the I want to say Connie Chung he was on and I was like, or Phil Donahue, one of the two, they're married, so it was either one of them. And then I had the New York Times calling, and then Inside Edition, and then my sister calls me from Canada, and she's like, you need to go get a National Enquirer, and I'm like, why? I'm not going to read that magazine. She's like, because you have a two-page spread, and I'm like, what? So I went and got it, just to heck, there's a two-picture of it, a picture of me, and articles and I was like oh my word mm -hmm. and then we had news stations calling us saying oh we just voted you the worst bar in America and serial killer bar and wow. so it kind of got to the point where it kind of got out of hand mm -hmm. so I had to tell my staff quit talking to the press enough is enough people aren't coming in anymore the customers it's getting crazy quit talking to the press what's the I mean you kind of spoke a little bit about the articles that you've seen what is the craziest headline that you've seen or maybe even like the tagline at the top of like oh, this crazy uh, place. In Playboy magazine there's a small article and it says Satan's Bar. And I was like, are you kidding me? Right. My brother who lives in Mexico saw it. Wow. Yeah, I'm like, this is ridiculous. Yeah, so kind of going off of that and like even before you apply, how much has the reputation probably changed here from then to now since it's tapered off I'd assume a little bit? Oh yeah, we still get lots of people mm -hmm. that come in though, um, that are out of towners. Mm -hmm. You know that have heard about it or so they always come in is it true is it true is it true so I mean yeah not as often mm -hmm. I would say maybe once twice a year people come in and ask about it because I know that's funny that's kind of like an urban myth right like is it true is it not what do you personally think it's possible I mean Stewart's Coffee used to be up um, at the top of Holly Street and I know that he went in there, so it's, oh, I mean, it's possible okay. he came in here. Yeah, I, didn't I mean, know it's, that. yeah, it's possible. And you know, the Cabin Tavern was up there. Um, well, it still is, but at previous owners, I mean, it's been there. Um, so it's possible that he went in there. I mean, that's when Georgia Pacific was here and the college and everything. So I mean, it's possible. It's very possible that she was in here. Even though this place is known for being the serial killer bar, it's more than just that. As Lynn put it, this restaurant is the last building created from pilings built over the water in Old Town Bellingham. Its history runs way deeper than its surface level serial killers. On top of that, they're famously known for their fish and chips and their clam chowder, so I thought I had to try it while I was there. So we have the infamous clam chowder here, and then we also have the infamous fish and chips, and we're going to do a little taste test and see how the food is that made some of these serial killers kind of eat. This is the clam chowder. I'm going to try this. I bet it's going to be really good. <laughs> Oh my god, yeah. This is like, this is better than the Miller Market clam chowder. This is very, I give this 9.5 out of 10 clams. This is like best on like a kind of rainy fall day, which is perfect. Um, very good, very good. This is the fish and chips, and I think the sauce that we have is the tartar sauce. We're gonna try this. I'm gonna split this in half. Already, I can tell it's very crunchy and bready. It's a classic. This is so good. I rate this um, a 10 out of fish, fishes, and 10 out of chips. My first bite of the fish and chips. Exactly what you want. Perfect fish to chip ratio. Perfect fries. I love it. We finally finished our food at the Waterfront Tavern and I'm currently sitting outside. It was actually such a fun little experience. I think being in there and not only just talking to Lynn, but we actually were able to talk to a few different people. It's a very homey bar and I think it just comes with a lot of history just 
how long the Waterfront Tavern has been open. Um, honestly, I can understand why serial killers would want to come inside because it's a very homey feeling. It makes you feel comfortable and the food is very good. So I would highly suggest that to people. It's very kind of tucked away. It's kind of like a hidden gem, I would say, uh, in Bellingham. So if you ever have the chance to swing by and uh, not only go into the bar where uh, serial killers have gone into, but also just to chat with the lovely people that frequent this bar and also just talking to Lynn, the owner. Uh, yeah, it was awesome. And I'm gonna come here in the next couple weeks or so again. Overall, this place wasn't what I expected. Feeling super welcomed by the customers and workers, I couldn't help but notice its unique community that's become so intrinsic to the bar outside of its serial killer reputation. When I asked Lynn if she could give this bar a tagline, what would it be? This is what she said. Cheers. <laughs> the TV show, Cheers. Okay. Yeah, because everybody is just, it's a very just relaxed, um, cozy, you know, atmosphere. Mm -hmm. So I would just say like, cheers. Like everybody knows your names. The bartenders know all the customers. Of course. And they just feel comfortable coming in here. Though this bar is known for hosting various serial killers, its one-of-a-kind energy shines bright through its reputation. To me, it makes sense as to why these serial killers chose the Waterfront Tavern in the first place.